Anna Zbering Breivik has said there are only two just and fair outcomes of this trial, acquittal or capital punishment. I consider 21 years of prison as a pathetic punishment. And one of the original judges assigned his trial agreed with him. Thomas Indreba was dismissed on day one when it came to light that he had tweeted that the death penalty is the only just sentence in this case. But 21 years imprisonment is the maximum sentence available in Norway since the death penalty for war crimes and treason was abolished in 1979. So do some crimes deserve the death penalty? Um, Michael, you work with the, uh, the Innocence Network, those who believe are <coughs> in prison and should not have been in prison in the first place. You know, some crimes are just so beyond the pale, you know, whether it be a mass killer like Breivik, a child killer like Robert Black, or somebody like Peter Sutcliffe. Does it not, do those six cases not test your liberal principles? No, I think that... Um, not at all? No, clearly. I think they're very emotive cases. Uh, I'm a parent myself, and, um, you know, you often think that if somebody harmed one of your own children, <clears throat> you know, you often think what you might do to protect your loved one or your wife or whatever. Or to seek um, vengeance. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the society we're brought up in. That's, a, that's how we think that we can actually right that wrong. But I think that, you know, we've got to decide about what our values are. As, as a kind of people, what our identity is. And I think that we abolished abolish capital punishment in this country in the 1960s because the British public really couldn't stomach the reality that, in a, that an innocent person had been executed wrongly. And I think that, you know, once you start to go down a path of saying that we want to reintroduce capital punishment into, even into conversations in this country, what you're going to do is you are inevitably going to be executing innocent people. And I think that the other aspect of it and is... And one innocent it, life lost is not worth it for the rest. Well, for the, for the pe people on the other side of this debate clearly think it is, because before we came on air, we were discussing over coffee, and people there think that, you know, we have a system, it's going to make mistakes, some innocent people are going to be killed, and that's okay. But it's not them. It's not their lives. And I think that, you know, judicial errors don't trouble people in the judicial <laughs> Well, is it okay if, if an innocent life is lost along the way, Peter Hitchens? No, of course it's not okay. And nobody says that it is okay, and every conceivable step should be taken to ensure that no innocent life is lost. But I think only a total pacifist can really honestly use that as an argument against the policy of the death penalty if you've otherwise accepted the death penalty is a good thing. We, in many cases, there will be people in this room who supported, for instance, the bombing of Serbia uh, during the, the, the Kosovo episode, and almost anybody in this room will, will believe that our conduct of the Second World War was correct. Now, in both cases, we pursued what we believed to be a good end, we can argue about that another time, and accepted that in the course of that, innocent people would inevitably die. And therefore, if you are going to say that you cannot accept even the faintest possibility of an innocent death, as a, as a reason for not having the death penalty, then you have to declare that you are a pacifist. You wouldn't have fought the Second World War, and there's a lot of other things you wouldn't so, have. So, it's so it's not a very good argument. That's not correct. It's not a very it's good not, argument. No, it's well, not it is, correct. Actually. What there's you're no, doing there's, there's no is you're mixing it. different things together no, and trying to come out with a conclusion. I don't actually agree that we should go to these wars, but that's a separate matter. What we're talking no, about? No, no, you, you excuse miss, me. You, you miss, excuse you miss, me. You missed my point already because I, I have to. I, it, what it's, I'm it's talking very, very about. Important. This, this, this argument is, is had so many times, and it's, it's so often dries into the sand because people don't listen to what the other ones say. What we're talking about no. is a judicial no. system. Right, let, let, let him just set the point if, out, then I come back you, to you. If you're going to argue that the death penalty is never justified uh, at all, then that's one thing, then you can argue that. Uh, but if you're going to argue that the, the danger of, of, of innocent life of being lost is the all-consuming veto over the death penalty, then that's a different question. Many people, particularly Michael Howard, the former Home Secretary, would say, I support the death penalty, but I'm against it because of the, the, the problem of innocent life. And what I'm pointing out is that that, as an argument, means that you, you, you're therefore also unable to adopt all kinds of other policies, which most people would see as desirable. So, but, but you can't, uh, if, if, if that's your okay, argument, then, okay. you, then, you could, right. then, then you have to, then you have to abandon a lot of other things but you, that you would But both, and as well, you're both, you're a bar criminal barrister, but you're both yeah. Christians. Surely, uh, it, it, the, the death penalty is vetoed by the fact that you're holding out the possibility of redemption for somebody, for a soul ultimately yeah. to be saved. Well, actually, actually, Surely actually, that's, yes, the, that's the point. Actually, that no. should argue against your position. No, it, <coughs> opposite. It, con uh, it concentrates the mind because uh, if you know you are going to face a higher court, and I think we have to remember that the originally the basis for the death penalty came um, Noah's Ark. I guess some people like James won't accept Noah's Ark, but when he came out, we still have a rainbow of course, when, he came, when Noah came out of um, the ark, he was told, but God said, if any man sheds blood, 
then by man shall his blood be shed, because man is made in the image of God. But there are 35 things in the and Old Testament that warrant well, the death well, penalty, is, including being rude to your parents. Well, that's, that's amazing. Let's say with Mark, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. Um, that's, that's amazing, Lord, which is separate, which was set aside by Christ in his death on the cross for us. And Let me ask you something. We now have a church and not a, not, not a nation. It's in the Bible, it's in Genesis, as you say, any man who sheds the blood of yeah. another. Let me ask you something then. If you yeah. believe that Jesus would have supported the death penalty, do you think that Jesus Christ who preached love and forgiveness would have been capable, yes or no, of pulling the lever? Jesus Christ will judge us all at the end of would our Would Jesus lives. Christ have been capable of pulling the lever? Jesus Christ didn't come as our judge, he came as our savior. But if he supported the no, death Nikki, penalty. Nikki, I do understand, but he suffered the death penalty no, no, for us. Said, when he came what? in the New Testament, he said, I've done away with an eye for an eye, yeah, he said. As a Christian, as a Christian, Bible for your own gain. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Tell you what the Bible says. Well, they're, they're the Old Testament. Yeah. But the Old Testament the is the, the New Testament yeah. is love. Yeah. Jesus no said, do not judge or you will be judged. Amen. Wait, wait, no, let's stay, let, Bruce, if, if we'll be with no, you in a minute, strong. we'll be back with Peter, but yeah. we're going to hear, since they've made this intervention, Peter, well, you, you must hear their story, oh, yeah, Peter. Yeah, no, you sure. must hear their story. Listen. You lost your son, story. Chris, 11 years ago. Our yeah. son was murdered yeah. by a gang 11 years ago. I'm sorry. When we went to court, we got lies, total lies mm. from them. Okay? I was really ra raging and I was angry and I wanted to go and kill him. A year after that, I decided to move on and forgive them because it was destroying me. After that, we decided we wanted to meet them and get the truth. We met one of the boys who killed our son last year. Now, if he had had the death penalty, we wouldn't have met him and I wouldn't have heard him say, Sorry. I was a coward and I killed your son. And I went on a restorative justice course. And suddenly I realised, and I saw Christopher for the first time, I realised who my victim was and I admitted it. We wouldn't have got all that if it had the death penalty. If you bring the death penalty in, people like us will get forgotten. We're victims and you're not putting us first. In you're not court, asking us. Right. In court, the victims don't get a voice. For the past eight years now, we've been going around prisons and schools seeking restorative justice. We have seen a lot of people change, a lot of prisoners inside and out What did it mean to you looking into the eyes of one of the boys who killed Christopher and for, for him to, to address you? What did it mean to you? It meant an end. An it end. meant a move on. We were able to move on. Peter, push in a minute. I'm, I'm so, so sorry to have interrupted have you earlier. No, no, no. I have a very, I have a very simple point here. Uh, you can't apologise to a dead person. You can apologize to the relatives of that person. You, you can apologize. I can't. Not speaking for you. you I'm, don't I don't, I'm, you not don't know. I'm not really speaking. I'm not speaking to us. I didn't interrupt you. Please don't interrupt me. Don't I'm not rude. I'm not attempting to speak for you. I'm attempting to speak for a law governed society in which the taking of life is the single most serious crime and against which there must be some defense. If people can take another life and get away with it, as they do in our society. Increasingly, they're not even charged with murder, they're charged with manslaughter and convicted of it, and they're out on the streets within a few years. If that happens, I will tell you what will happen, there will be more murder. So, okay, and, uh, if you kill, be, my, no, if you minute, kill the boy who killed my be, son, what about minute. his family? Yeah. What, do they, say, do well, you want so to what make... what about his family? The boys. What about the boys' family, the boys who killed our son? Do you want to make them victims too? Do you want to, them to suffer the way we... I want, this to be, I want this to be justice. I want this to be justice. justice I want that to be law. law. I want that to be protection uh, for innocent right. life in okay. our society. We'll speak which to there isn't a Michael, we'll have you on in a minute, um, but James is desperate to come in, and then you're next. If I can form an orderly queue. I think <laughs> Peter is James. Peter is doing our work for us. But first of all, he says you can't apologise to a dead person, and yet at the same time contends that incidences of killing innocent people by accident shouldn't be a fly in the ointment of his support for state-sanctioned murder. You can't say sorry to someone who's been executed despite being innocent, Peter. 
And your, your, your canard, you, hang on, speak, you're, you're very fond of reminding other people. Let, let him finish, Peter. Speak as if I'm too innocent. Let him finish, Peter. I'm concerned about innocent death. Let him finish, Peter, On the contrary, I wish to prevent it. Okay, James. And secondly, the parallel with war, I think any court of law, any justice system I'm aware of, recognises self-defence. So for you to equate state-sanctioned murder of someone who's already been captured and convicted with a nation seeking to repel Nazism or, or, or combat the excesses of Slobodan Milosevic is, is an argument so fatuous that, frankly, it's beneath you. Well, listen, in my story story as well, I don't agree just... with any care in that case, is all I uh, Michael, you I were in help. prison for uh, a murder, for, you didn't do it. You were no, there for I 11, 11 years. I did 11 years and 43 days because um, dishonest people, inclu including people in authority, decided they were going to use me as an escape goat for a crime I didn't do. Terrible. Now, uh, Mr. Flynn knows about my case and whatever, mm -hmm. and I would have been executed if you would have had your way. The Birmingham Six, the Guildford yeah. Four. Where's, where's, where's it going to stop? All right, all right, all right. May, I answer, uh, may, may I answer that in that case? The uh, abolition of the death penalty has, has, has cheapened the trial of murder in this country. <laughs> the, 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 how? Ju well, how? Very simply, uh, have you ever sat on a jury? How much more seriously do you take a trial where your verdict can send someone to the gallows what you say when is not? How much, how much more serious? Look, no. the, the, penalty for, the, penalty for, the, penalty the penalty for the The penalty for murder in this country is now a number of years in prison, often quite a brief number of years no. in prison. That's not correct. The, 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 pro the, pro the procedures of our courts. I, the okay. of our courts I want have to hear from Bruce Anderson. I want to hear from Bruce Anderson. Well, uh, two points. First of all, you gentlemen I, find the, I yeah. find the appearance of the murdered, murdered boy profoundly moving, mm. but you can't determine the criminal law. About a thousand years ago it was decided in England that crime was not an offence against the victim, it was an offence against the king's peace. And the king, and I don't think you should be entitled to demand a reprieve for your son's killers any more than you should be entitled to demand the death penalty. There is an argument that if we hanged a few of the worst murderers every year, where there would be no doubt, and it would, I'm sure it probably wouldn't have included you, a few of the worst murderers every year, the public demand for vengeance, which I think is not an unhealthy demand, would be satiated, and actually we could be far more merciful to the generality of murderers. A lot of boys of 20 now are being sentenced to serve. Well, listen, Bruce, in, Ameri in America, you're three times more likely to be on death row if you're black. What does that tell you? It, it may tell you that there's either blacks commit more crimes or there's something wrong with the American system of justice. Yeah. But it's not an analogy <laughs> here. It's not an analogy, it's not an analogy here. Uh, the fact is our system is a much more is a much more civilised one, I think. Than is it a more civilised system? I it's not, and I think that's when I come in. When you look at criminal justice up. and the victims of, of wrongful convictions, what you see is the same kind of demographic. You see working class people, ethnic minority people. I want to say one final thing, though, to this. You talk about people getting short prison sentences. Prisoners who maintain innocence in this country may never get out. We don't t officially have life without parole, but the cases that we work on with the innocence projects in this country, these are people who were given an eight nine, ten year tariff, they're still in prison after 40 years because they won't admit to a crime they said they didn't do. Because you say that you care about innocent people in prison, but what do you actually do? You have to be alive to the reality of the numbers of innocent people in prison before you can even do anything about it. You're heartless and you're immoral. <laughs> I make no personal attack upon you, and I, I think you should probably do the same for me. I, 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 I accept that your motives are good. You should accept that mine are as well. No, what no. I am you trying, don't accept what, his motives are good. No, because then, then, can, then, it's then just, don't, he's paying but, lip but, but, service. But, but, he's but, saying but, what he knows he has but, to say. But, listen, but actually, he believes it. He doesn't believe it because he's not prepared to do anything about it. To blandly say, I care about the innocent, but then just say we should have the death penalty, the two things don't fit together. You obviously have little idea what I think, or, and, and haven't read my book on the subject. So you, 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 you're, you're just shoot, you're shooting off arrows in the dark against what I think without knowing. Don't do it. I don't. I'm, I'm addressing what you say. The simple point here is this: Make a in, our, point, so, in our society, I'll, I'll speak to since the death penalty was abolished, the amount of violence 
capable of killing people in this, in this country it has, has increased enormously. The only reason our murder rate is not immensely higher is because at the same time the, the quality of medical treatment, particularly of trauma surgery, has increased immensely. The number of attempted murders and, ass and assaults of, with intent to kill in this country is enormous each year. Okay, if, that, if, we, okay. if we didn't have superb trauma treatment, our, our, our murder rate would be at the level Peter, of the United thank States. You. Hands up in the audience. Hands up in the audience. You first, sir, you, you first are in the blazer. Over here. Yes. Uh, surely the uh, problem with the death penalty, I mean, we've talked a lot about the practical problems, but we haven't really talked about the moral question. Do we think that people who commit terrible crimes should be punished, uh, and if we do, then don't we think that murder is a p peculiarly terrible crime and it should be punished in a particular way? Because it seems that the whole idea that people are responsible for what they do has completely disappeared, and what has been replaced is that, that criminals are actually victims themselves. That's why we don't have the death penalty, and that's why criminals are treated so soft in the first place. Okay, and um, beside you. Hi. Um, I confess to being, in Peter's words, a total pacifist, but as far as I'm concerned, the death penalty is not justice, but revenge. We as a moral society, as moral society should not have to resort to something that a criminal would do in order to stop a criminal. Why don't we do more about why they do these things? Why don't we deal with that and talk more about that? Why they want to kill my son, rather than after? Did those boys say uh, how, why they killed Chris? Yeah. He said he was a 15-year-old coward who were on drinks and drugs. At they were high on drink and they were high they were on not. drugs. But is it worth, let's take it into the mass killing, is it worth spending time to work out why Breivik did it or not? Is it worth spending time to... It's worth spending all time. Is it? He's a very sick man yeah. and needs help. But can I just Breivik say... Breivik needs help. He's a very sick man. He was playing games. He said that he played video games yeah. and taught himself how to do this. What does that say about our sick society, well, about games? Well, the boys no, that killed right. my Come son said that. They yeah. said that in court yeah. to the QC. Bruce Anderson, we were playing games. Bruce Anderson, Bruce Anderson. I, would, I find the, the smug expression on Breivik's face intolerable. I would like to adjust it, say, by a hundred lashes or a few goes on the waterboard. <laughs> there, is an argument, there is an argument for sentencing him to death and keeping him alive for the psychiatrists and people to examine him and come to all the conclusions and only then hanging him. But there is... But what, if, what, no what, what if, what if, Mark Mullins, what if somewhere down the line, Breivik turns around and says, do you know what, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm trying to talk your language here, Mark. <laughs> what if he says, do you know what, I, I've got all this wrong. Christ is the answer. I want to come to Christ. Well, you're, you're cutting off that possibility, yeah. aren't you? No, well, first of all, I'm very glad that we all recognise he's not a Christian because some people have claimed he's a fundamentalist. But one day, but do you not hold that hope that one day he will find God? It, as, I, as I said to you, it's amazing how the death penalty concentrates the mind. If you know You're not answering the question, Mark. No, I am. I'm saying that that's his time to repent. Because when? if you leave it, if sentence against a, a matter is, is prolonged, then people just harden their heart against the consequences. But there and are it, many people who convert in prison. Well, somebody who knows they're going to face the death penalty has their opportunity to repent then, and many take it. Uh, and they okay, accept, yeah, I, as I, a thief on the cross, the that, they, that they deserve what they're getting. You, you, but you, they go to heaven you, at the end of it because they've repented. Be they go to heaven because they've repented. Because they've repented of their sins and trusted so, in so Jesus so Christ. And, you and can't be a Christian important. unless Mark says you are, and you can't have a view on the death penalty unless you've read Peter's book. It's an astonishing... <laughs> Can I very, can I, may I very briefly say, the Christian faith in which I'm raising my children is represented by Ray and Vihe, Mark, not by you. All right, listen, what about David from the Islamic Party of Britain? Are you, do you support the death penalty? Yes, I do. Yeah, for, for whom? For what? Well, for the right reasons. I think it should be down uh, to the families to decide. There, there are rules, and of course, as I mentioned earlier before I was... Uh, about the, the Ten Commandments being uh, overtaken by rules on, and regulations that have failed us. But there sh it, shouldn't be com it shouldn't be eliminated, it should be allowed where conditions... I remember the Moors murderers and I met people who mm. have lived with that and... and uh, Likewise, yeah. Absolutely terrible, awful. Terrible. So, but then they wouldn't have found out where well, the, the, that body was buried had, yes. had she not been kept alive. Yeah. So, well, that's true. But you know, there was, there was information that came later on, wasn't there? There, there is true, but I, I think yeah. that the actual... The, the fact that uh, Hindley, I mean, Lord Longford, he was wanting her released, he should have taken it to so his Breivik, house. Do you think Breivik should die? I think so, yes. So, if one of the 7-7 seven, seven bombers had been caught, should he have been put to death? Well, if we got the right 7-7 seven, seven bombers, yes, we would. But the thing mm. is that uh, 
we know that 9 11 and 7 7 was not done by the guys that were in, were in oh, the I see. Oh, <laughs> oh, I see. I see. <laughs> we know that, do we? <laughs> James, do you want to just. You don't know it. I, I can't argue with uh, the man with the crystal ball. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. I have, I have nothing to add. Great. We go around the country. We go in schools and youth clubs and we teach the kids. We work with a lot of youth people, like I mentioned, one street of Grove. We teach the kids to put down the knife, put down the gun, stop revenge. And stop revenge. And all we're talking about in here at the moment it's is revenge. revenge. Yeah. So what are we teaching our young children out there? No, that's... It's we're, a talking, we're, talking about, isn't it? we're talking about We're talking about justice. We're talking about an eye no, for an eye. No, an justice. Eye for an eye. No, no, sir. Justice is about the so, government... So um, should he be dead? Yes. I would be dead. Should he be should dead? He be dead? Yes. An innocent man should not be dead, no. But I would have been dead. If it was done to the victim's family, like this gentleman said here, they, would have, they wanted me dead. As soon as you are convicted... Well, address, address him on that. I know. Yeah, 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 but you can never justify the death penalty. We're supposed to live in a well, civilised society. Are we we're no, we're no, we're, society we're, you're not better than the person the who actually penalty. committed the killing. Because you want to kill somebody. You can't justify it. And what about the youngsters of today? What kind of message is that sending? It's okay, it's okay to kill, kill people if, it's, if they're in government and they can turn around and say, well, we're the government, you killed him, so I'm going to kill you. So that makes it right, does it? No, it, no, it doesn't. But that's what the you're saying. You said that. You, car you caricature your opinion. No, no, I'm not at all. I, I, you, should, you, you cannot should, you should, justify you should, you the death penalty. Should, should, Innocent yes. people have already been murdered oh, by the state. Timothy Abbott. Jamie Bamber's still in prison after 25 years trying to clear his name. You've got Ray Gilbert, he's done 30 years, he's still trying to clear his name. Just had another appeal to that. Yeah, there are, do you know, there are people in prison who did do these crimes. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, know, yeah. I know a few of them who said that and said, believe me, I... I you did, but there's some guilty people along the way. Oh, yeah, no, there's no, I mean, I've met people in society. And there are guilty people in society because they escape justice because innocent people are serving their sentences. Ray, last we word. don't live in a perfect society. We don't. I can very yeah. easily sit here and do as your side has done and make an emotional case, citing again the game. Emotional, again, it wait a minute. It citing again the game, the horrible things it's which personal. happen to people who are murdered. I could do that, but I'm not doing it because I no. think there is a rational case for the death penalty which you need to no, consider. No, no, there's All right, not. Okay, case. okay, Ray, and last no, word to you. Look me this. in the eye and tell is me it's rational. Is this emotional? No, it's not. No? It's not emotional. I needed answers. We both did. We both needed answers. Do you respect people who say, who don't take your course, who say, actually, I would like the person who killed my little girl, my little I feel boy. Terribly sad Do you for respect them. their position? Yes. They, I understand yeah, where they're understand. coming from. Of course, I've been there. Yeah. 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 But I've chosen to move on, and you can choose to move on, and there are many like us who, who know that now and are moving on, and we want to help other people it do takes that. Time, yeah. But their meeting, yeah. meeting the boys who killed our son was part of that, mm -hmm. was part of getting the answers. And that process goes on, doesn't was it? The, and the it process goes on. It's just one more thing. Everybody keeps quoting the Old Testament. You know, Gandhi said, if we start looking for an eye for an eye, three quarters of the world would be blind. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's all your contributions. Thank you. Uh, now, if, you, if you'd like to have your say about that debate, log on to bbc.co.uk slash the big questions. You'll find links to places to continue the discussion online. And I think that, you know, once you start to go down a path of saying that we want to reintroduce capital punishment into, even into conversations in this country, what you're going to do is you are inevitably going to be executing innocent people. And I think that the other aspect of it and is... And one innocent life lost is not worth it for the rest. Well, the pe people on the other side of this debate clearly think it is, because before we came on air, we were discussing over coffee, and people there think that, you know, we have a system, it's going to make mistakes, some innocent people are going to be killed, and that's okay. But it's not them. It's not their lives. And I think that, you know, judicial errors don't trouble people in the judicial act. <laughs> They're very emotive cases. Uh, I'm a parent myself, and... Um, you know, you often think that if somebody harmed one of your own children, you know, you often think what you might do to protect your loved one or your wife or whatever. Or to seek um, vengeance. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the society we're brought up in. That's, a, that's how we think that we can actually right that wrong. But I think that, you know, we've got to decide about what our values are. As, as a kind of people, what our identity is. And I think that we abolish, abolished capital punishment in this country in the 1960s because the British public really couldn't stomach the reality that, in, that an innocent person had been executed wrongly. Is it okay if, if an innocent life is lost along the way, Peter Hitchens? No, of course it's not okay. And nobody says that it is okay. And every conceivable step should be taken to ensure that no innocent life is lost. But I think only a total pacifist 
can really honestly use that as an argument against the policy of the death penalty if you otherwise accept that the death penalty is a good thing. We, in many cases, there will be people in this room who supported, for instance, the bombing of Serbia uh, during the, the, the Kosovo episode, and almost anybody in this room will, will believe that our conduct of the Second World War was correct. War crimes and treason was abolished in 1979. So do some crimes deserve the death penalty? Um, Michael, you work with the, uh, the Innocence Network, those who believe are <coughs> in prison and should not have been in prison in the first place. You know, some crimes are just so beyond the pale, you know, whether it be a mass killer like Breivik, a child killer like Robert Black, or somebody like Peter Sutcliffe. Does it not, do those cases not test your liberal principles? No, I think that... Um, not at all? No, clearly, I think... Anna's bearing Breivik has said there are only two just and fair outcomes of this trial, acquittal or capital punishment. I consider 21 years of prison as a pathetic punishment. And one of the original judges assigned his trial agreed with him. Thomas Indreba was dismissed on day one when it came to light that he had tweeted that the death penalty is the only just sentence in this case. But 21 years imprisonment is the maximum sentence available in Norway since the death penalty for 